Hello everybody, right, okay, so this is bangers and mash. Now I know you all know how to cook bangers and mash. I know you know how to peel potatoes, I know how, you know how to grill, fry, oven roast, or sausages, and deep, put some peas on, and all the rest of it. I get it, I know. However, there are a couple of little tricks that you might pick up, so bear with me, and let's do this, okay? Um, I hope you're all well, and I'll stop waffling. Okay, so I've got a pan of boiling water on there for my spuds. I'm gonna do sweet potato mash. Here's the first little twist, okay? Look, there's some salt for the spuds. Now, sweet potatoes cook a lot quicker than regular potatoes, so what you should do is, with your sweet potatoes, once you've chopped them, peeled them and chopped them, dunk them in a bowl of cold water, and it will clean, not only it will clean them up, but it will pull some of the starch out, okay? That's my first tip. So your, your mash is a little lighter. Also, I'd go 50-50 sweet potato to a regular potato split, okay? That's for three or four people, up to you. Okay, so sweet potato mash, you need the regular potato. They add a, a, a denseness to the mash. If you just go sweet potato, it's almost like a puree. Uh, they haven't got the... Uh, they haven't got the, uh, the fortitude, if you will. Right, now, sausages. Um, I know I could just bang them on this tray and smack them in the oven, but I'm gonna brown them off first. Because, two reasons, really. The color looks better. And they look like films or cartoon sausages. And that's, that, actually, that's the only reason. And also, my oven's a little bit knackered on this side, so um, it wouldn't give it the colour I wanted to put on the table. The other two things I'm going to do uh, is the gravy, like a cheats gravy, which I do for my roast dinners. If I haven't roasted an entire joint or a river beef or something delicious like that, uh, but I still want to make the gravy tasty, I'm going to do that. And, um, yeah, and obviously the peas or the veggies that are going to go with it, I'm just basically going to put them in a cup and nuke them in the microwave. Just little tips that can get it on the table quicker. So, pans on, I'm gonna brown the sausages. Once the sausages are brown, and then I'll cut this and we'll go to the end, end result, I'm gonna, on their tray, two sprigs of uh, rosemary, two cloves of garlic. You don't even have to peel them. Just get your hand underneath them and crush. There we go, just break, break open so it can, and put them on the tray just for a little bit of extra flavour. You don't have to, I know every one of you cook pancakes and mash, this is the way I do it. So we're gonna brown the sausage a little bit. Obviously the middle of my cooker has a wok burner, these things kick out. Let me talk, talk to the camera. Right, so, in the middle of my oven there's a wok burner, the big ring with the other little ring inside. Now they kick out some serious heat, so you've gotta watch them, okay? So I'm gonna brown those, transport it to there, bang them in the oven, and that's it. Now, bangers and mash for me is a staple. It's good rugby fodder. And a lot, if you want to know more about me, a lot of my food uh, comes from uh, having played rugby, just wanting what I call rugby food, which is meat, potatoes, veg, gravy, honest home cooking. Nothing fancy. If you want fancy, that's great. That's why the best restaurants in the world make it look so pretty with tweezers and I would be well out of my league. Um, I like home cooked food, I like stews, I like roasting, roasting is my death row meal. I'll have it in a heartbeat. What do you want, you're gonna get gas tomorrow. I'll have a river beef with Yorkshire puddings, gravy, 18 bottles of wine, a cheese board, and some solid roast potatoes. Now, it might be different for you. I can do a lot of stuff, but what I, what I struggle to do is making it over fancy. Okay, I'm just a simple guy who's cooked for 25 years and has just realised that you just want home cooking done simply. Um, I'll do a little intro spiel if this takes off of why I've started cooking with Coops. But it's generally, it's my mum couldn't get her whole way around a recipe book by one of the modern day chefs. Too many ingredients. And didn't understand the method that they were put in to get the same result that their professional cameraman had put onto, into their book. So, right. If you look at that, it's just, honestly, it's just for a bit of colour to make those bangers look the part and give them a kickstart onto the plate. Right, we'll take that to one side. Like I said, if you want to speed up the boiling, bang a pan on top. We don't use lids in kitchens, they get in the way. Because if you imagine us making a stock or cooking a sauce on the section, you, you're always tasting, adding. 
ingredients. Taking the lid off to do all that when you're really busy and it's a bit manic just isn't worth it. So, um, sealed them for five minutes just to give that little brown stripe, make them look nice. And then into the oven, 180 degrees. 15 minutes, give them a shake, another 10, 25 minutes, sausage are done. Wonderful, they're done. The potatoes are gonna boil. We all know how to make mash. I do mine separately. People add cream, people add bits and pieces. Um, I will further down the line show you how to do it with jacket potatoes or baked potatoes, where you spoon out all the, um, the innards and then pass it through a sieve. Things like that um, to make the creamiest mash you've ever had. Anyway, I'll stop yamming on about a coffee, sorry. We'll wait for the mash to come, talk you through the last bit, I'll show you the secret, uh, the quick gravy that tastes actually all right. And uh, yeah, see you in a bit, bye. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, right, so um, the mash is nearly there. The sausage is still cooking in the oven, but I'm gonna show you the gravy and start with the pan. No bigger than that. I'm gonna use some of the veg water. In this instance, it's potato. Waste not, what not. Okay, get some fire on. And this is basically, gravy should be all the meat juices and some stock and all the good stuff from a big roast dinner, but a lot of people use this. And I am gonna use a little bit of it, but I just wanna tell you how to bolster it out a little bit. So, boiling water. This is an ice tray. This is white wine and this is red wine. When you've, I mean, it's not often that there's much left in a, a bottle after a night in our house, but if something's on the way out where you know it's not gonna get drunk or whatever, you can freeze it and use it. And I'm gonna put red wine in here to go with the bangs and mash. Hopefully it'll come out and not and play ball. Yeah, there we go, look. So freeze the red wine, or if you've got it on the side of the stove, just give it a couple of gloves of red wine. So we've got the potato water and some red wine. I'm just gonna pop that in the freezer. Do stand by, appreciated. Okay, next thing to go in, a bit of tomato puree. Adds a bit of thickness to it and a bit of flavor. Okay, so we've got red wine, water, and tomato puree. Bring that to the boil and then thicken it with this. That's it. You can go into much more depth. I would much prefer us to do a four hour cook and have all the bone marrow juices and fat and everything from a big rib of beef and stir in some flour or some roux and make it that way. I really would some red wine. And what we do when we make stocks in professional kitchens is like make stock pans and all that, so the flavor's all there. This is for you guys cooking at home. Just to tweak, <laughs> tweak your bisto. Almost a shame to do this, let's get rid of that. Um, and add a bit of flavor to it. So there you go, a bit of red wine, a bit of smile puree. Have to bring it up to the boil and then whisk in the bad stuff. But it works if you've got the in-laws coming around, surprisingly, or if you're like me, you've done bangers and mash or something and someone's asked for gravy, just in the kitchen quick. <laughs> Ta-da, perfect, right, okay. Potatoes are done, I'm just gonna drain them off. We're gonna mash those. Again, I don't really think you guys know need a lesson in how to mash potatoes. I would suggest that once you've drained all the majority of the water off and you're not using it for gravy, just let them air dry for a little while, okay? Um, again, sweet potatoes are a bugger for holding onto the water and that can make your mash less mash and more puree. Um, but yeah, come on guys, you've all made mashed potatoes. If you haven't, I don't know if you've been living under a rock. Um, <laughs> that's all very good. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do the mash in a minute. And I'll come back with some peas and then we'll plate up, bait. Okay, they're air dry, we'll get on with them. They are frozen peas. You can see the frost on them still glistening under the lens. A little bit of water halfway up the peas and then, we'll cover them if you like, doesn't really matter too much. Clean film them in the microwave a minute and then give them a little shake and then another minute and that's your peas done. Honestly, fear ye not. It all gets cooked the same way. If you want to put a pan on, put a pan on. Okay, uh, gravy. The puree wine and potato water combo is boiling, so in goes the uh, naughty stuff. And let's be honest, this though is just brown corn flour at the end of the day. It's a thickening agent. It tastes very little. 
shake that in, stir it up. It's got to be boiling though. The, the agent, the thickening agent, in Bisto, corn flour, things like that, do nothing. It will just sit there and go lumpy if you don't have the water boiling. Sorry, I've lost my voice for two seconds. Right, perfect. So that's the gravy done. Sausages are on the way. Let's do our mash. Okay, in the back in the pan. Some more water in there, just check in. I've got a masher that looks kind of medieval. My mum got me this. Can you see that? There's more blades than it is mash, so it's absolutely banging. Butter. I know you guys, certain people use Lurpak or a butter substitute. Um, please don't. Just when you're next in the, uh, in the supermarket, get some unsalted butter. The reason it's unsalted is so you can make puddings with it as well, desserts. They will ask for unsalted butter. Because um, as I'm doing now, you can always add salt. And desserts, yeah, you don't, unless it's like a brownie or something, salted caramel, you don't really want salty butter in a, in a sweet thing. Okay, there's another tip. <laughs> okay, so we've got just simply butter, pepper and salt. Loads of butter, loads of pepper. Same for when you do um, mass swede or root veg, whatever your family are jonesing for. And yeah, I know you don't need to see this, but I need it there. Bear with me. Now, because we air dried the sweet potato, it's not going to a puree, it is going to a mash, and it's starting to look really good. So once you've got all the, as many lumps as you want out of it, if you like it lumpy, mash it less. Very simple. Get that clean, put it on soak, help the dishwasher, wooden spoon, and beat it to smithereens, okay? Just to check, mix your two potatoes together. Check that, I like one with a little bit of lump. Not gonna lie. If you want it really smooth, you take the sieve you drained it in, you put it in there, and you take the back of a spoon, oh, I'll have to let myself down here. You take, the, you take the back of the spoon, and you, I'll show you. you. Put it in there, ready? And if it's too lumpy, or it's got stuff in, you take the back of the spoon, and you call, it's called passing. You probably all know this as well, but if you pass it through, the small holes in the sieve, We'll get rid of the lumps and you'll have a lovely, lovely, smooth mash. And some of those fibrous bits of the sweet potato will bugger off as well. Look at that, that's just really, there's nothing in there. Very smooth. I like a little bit more rustic. Plus I'm lazy and the kids are for my bangs of mash. Okay, so we've done our mash. Here's there. Let's check on our peas. Two seconds. Give them a shake. Another minute. We can play that. Beautiful, right? Let's do it. One for me. There's the rest of the family. And one for the wee man. There we go. Like I said, my videos basically people that cook at home. I want a bit of a change up. Sweet potato mash with sausages in less than half an hour. Because someone went to the park with the little one on a one day of exercise and lost track of time. Amazing. Alright, that's that part done. There we go, guys. See how our sausages are doing for colour. Smell alright. See, I told you, if I hadn't sealed them, they'd look really anemic. So, sealing them in the pan when your oven's not up to scratch isn't the end of the world. One, two for the missus, one for the boy, three for me. And I like garlic a lot and rosemary, so there's a little garnish there. Amazing, the peas will be done. Out of the microwave into a sieve. Other draining mechanisms are available. And look, by this time, it's probably all tuned out. I just wanted to show you that sweet potatoes need 
proper potatoes with them, otherwise you're absolutely buggered. And then we've got some gravy. It's still a bit thin, but the missus doesn't like it too thick, so it's not the sun. Always do too much gravy, me. Loads left there. So, that's my bangers and mash. Not too shabby. Pretty safe, simple, pretty basic. Lockdown food. Hope to stay safe, stay well. Tune in for the next one. <laughs> Bye.